I gave my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bones. I gave my love a story that had no end. I give Thanks for watching Numbskull News. Today, we're talking about early 90s music, and I'm not talking about grunge. I'm not talking about alternative. I love grunge. I love alternative, but there was so much more music going on back then. And I'm going to stick to hard rock and heavy metal. That's what I know. So I want to give you my personal top 10 albums uh, of the early 90s that are not alternative, not grunge, and... I would love to go with some underground stuff like Clutch or Acid Bath or something like that. But we're going to stick to bands who had radio hits. Albums with radio hits on them because those are the songs that really help define the generation. So let's get started. <laughs> Out the gate, number 10, Jackal, self-titled. Came out in 1992. Had four big radio hits on it. Uh, the Lumberjack, I Stand Alone, Down On Me, and When Will It Rain. I mean, this, this band is freaking awesome. Their southern hard, hard rock outfit even had a freaking chainsaw in the band. <laughs> yeah. Dude did a solo with a chainsaw. Now, the reason they're so low on the list is because by the time he got to about 94, they didn't get a whole lot of radio play. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, turds and idiots out there saw them as an 80s hair metal band, and there was a lot of hate <laughs> for, for uh, 80s hair metal. And I was a part of that hate, of course. But Jackal was never a part of that. I mean, if 80s hair band stuff was cool, it would, it would be Jackal. But, but it wasn't. It sucks they got viewed in that light. I think if they came out today, I mean, they would be seen as like a cool retro rock band, you know. But you know, but that album, I don't care what anyone says, that album is phenomenal. And if you want to use a, a new school term, it was fire. meantime and I'll be honest I, I don't like this album as much as Jackals and you know about half the album is good a couple songs are really great but the other half is mundane kind of boring you know so why is it on the list well why is it above Jackal well one song <laughs> that's right one song uns unsung it's one of the greatest songs to come out of the 90s it, it, it radio play all throughout the early 90s mid 90s late 90s all the way to today it's just a staple and i had to have it on the list and i personally it, it never gets old whenever i hear that song i jack that crap up i'm not a huge helmet fan as you can see this is their classic album and i'm not overly impressed with the album uh, most music critics just you know wet themselves over helmet and over this album I, I never understood why but I have to give them credit I have to put them on the list because they did help define that generation of music A 
lot of y'all might be pissed about this. Korn's self-titled debut came out in 94. Makes it on my list at number 8. Well, why isn't it higher than that? I mean, Korn, legendary, right? Well, not their self-titled album. It's my favorite album, but they only had one minor radio hit on the album, Shoots and Ladders. But it was very important. It, it brought on everything to come in the late 90s. And an incredible song. When I first heard it, I was probably I was probably a junior in high school when I first heard it and was blown away. <laughs> I was blown away by it. it. didn't sound like anything else. And that was the beauty of the early 90s, you know, was so many things, so many bands sounded so much so different than each other. You know, you'd hear a Tool song and then followed by the Shoots and Ladders. And you're like, what the hell? It's not like today where, you know, you have like 10 bands in a row and it sounds like the same freaking band. So the variety was just off the charts back then. Horn really exemplifies that, and I had to put them on the list. I just couldn't put them that high because you're talking about early 90s, and they didn't make a huge impact in the early 90s. But I think their self-titled debut album, which got absolutely no uh, play on MTV, and like I said, one minor hit, but they deserve respect to be in there. They were a part of the early 90s. They were a part of the tapestry, just not a huge part. One band that was a huge part of the early 90s, of course, Nine Inch Nails. The Downward Spiral uh, came out in 94. Two big songs, Hurt and Closer. You can't have a top 10 list of the 90s without having Nine Inch Nails on it, even if you included Alternative and Grunge. But to me... I, I'm a fan of Nine Inch Nails, but not a huge fan. They, I know they had a huge cult following, but there's so many, so many tracks on the Downward Spiral to me that that don't really, I don't know, it's like noise. <laughs> it's just, it, it's not, it was never for me. Even when I was a kid, I'm just like, yeah, you know, Closer's great. You know, Hurt's great. There's a couple other songs on there that's great. But there's so much of it that's like, I, I don't know. Uh industrial noise maybe i don't know i get i know it's art i know it's creative it, it just you know sucks <laughs> just i know it's not for me like i said it's not for me but i do have to give them that respect and what an impact they had so i got them at number seven if you don't like it come up with your own list suck it let me hit the toy one more time before we ride Number six, Corrosion of Conformities, Deliverance, came out in 94. Two big radio hits, Albatross, Clean My Wounds. The songs were everywhere. The album, fantastic. One of my favorite albums from the era. They took kind of like that uh, Pantera path of doing rock and metal, but made it their own. Uh, the musicianship is really great. Riffs are, are, are fantastic. Uh, the vocal beautiful love the vocal if you're not familiar with them get familiar with this album because there's a couple of songs and some other albums that are good this is really their only album uh that's probably why a lot of people aren't hugely familiar with them and uh, today they're one of those bands that that get lost over time because they didn't have a ton of success you know everyone knows metallica because album after album after album they're gaining fans throughout the decades corrosion of conformity wasn't like that uh, they had that one huge 
album that sold huge and was all over the radio, all over MTV, but they faded because they couldn't, like many bands, like most bands, they can't keep that level of production up. And, and which is fine. Hey, they gave me that one great album. They gave me some other good, good songs afterwards, but that one great album, and it has to be a staple in the early 90s. So if you're uh, discovering music in the early 90s, you want to keep going with it, you love rock, you love metal, alternative grunge, all of it, you got to give this album a listen. You're, you won't regret it. They probably shouldn't be at number five. Prong, uh, their album Cleansing, 1994. This one, they made such an impression on me. To, even today, it's still one of my favorite bands. I never get tired of listening to them. Uh, they've had probably eight or nine albums, and I haven't found a bad one yet. Now, they haven't had the same kind of success uh, on the radio or MTV or anything like they did it with uh, 94's Cleansing, but the song is Snap Your Finger, Snap Your Neck. That was the one that was all over the radio. It, it just hard driving riffs that are so catchy, man. It, it, it's so great. Uh, Tommy Victor's voice is so different from so many other people's. It has so much character, inflection in it. I, I just, I gravitated to it. And I understand a lot of people who loved early 90s probably wouldn't agree to have prong even on the list much less number five but to me it's i'm a riff guy i love that stuff i love i love that money riff all right something that you want to go out and pit to throw elbows to that's that's this album that's the that's the kind of that's the kind of songs they threw out there there wasn't any love songs going on with prong and i love them for it <laughs> Against the Machine's self-titled debut album in 1992. You cannot talk about the early 90s without having Rage Against the Machine. So even if I wasn't a fan, they would be high on my list. I know number four might be a little low for some people. It, it just depends on what day you catch me on. Maybe I might have number three tomorrow, number two the next day. That's just where, that's just where I end up with them. And the two big radio hits they've had was a uh, killing in the name and freedom just outstanding outstanding songs the record is just insane it is insanely insanely great if you don't know this album you don't love this album then you you just you're not a metal fan you're not a rock fan and that's okay <laughs> that's okay if you don't like them there's country, there's hip hop, there's R and B, there's a lot of place, a lot of genres to go to, mariachi. There's a lot of things to listen to. But <laughs> if you're a, if you're a fan of hard rock and metal, that album has got to be a staple. And if you're talking early '90s, son, turn in your '90s card if you ain't about this album. <laughs> Number 
three, Undertow by Tool. Now, of course, Tool has worldwide, worldwide fans, and I'm one of them. This is their my favorite album by them. There's not a bad track on it. My only gripe <laughs> is that on the CD, after the last song, it just keeps going all the way up. Like Every track is like five seconds long, and it gets to 69. Then you get a bunch of, I don't know, like an animal orgy. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so weird and it's so tool i guess so you gotta forgive them for that i suppose because it's tool but of course everybody knows sober everybody knows prison sex just phenomenal songs the whole album is phenomenal and definitely had their own style they were in a class all to themselves um like nine inch nails had other bands that sounded like them same thing with nirvana same thing with pearl jam uh you know, same thing with with Pantera. A lot of, but no one can duplicate Tool. They are just so unique. And I don't have to tell you any more about it. Y'all know about Tool. You know about this album. It's got to be there. It's on my number three spot. It's the second album I've ever purchased on my own when I was a kid. And it's just so. <clears throat> so it has a very big place in my heart. And. I, I, I would have put it higher, but there's two bands I cannot keep out of the top two. First, let me say, there is no logical reason I don't have Pantera number one. All right. As far as the early 90s go, these guys were a juggernaut. I mean, they were selling albums at, at the same pace as Nirvana or Pearl Jam or Alice in Chains. They were huge. Uh, Far Beyond Driven came out in 94. And Phil and Summo, I believe he's right. It's the highest selling uh, and heaviest album ever to get to number one. And he's correct on that. But at the same time, I can't just go with Far Beyond Driven, one album. You know, Cowboys from Hell. I mean, you got Cemetery Gates and everything on there. Vulgar Display of Power with, with Walk and This Love. And, of course, the Far Beyond Driven with uh, Five Minutes Alone. You, you can't, I can't... I can't keep any of these albums out off this list. So, number two, Pantera. All three of those albums... <laughs> they're just they're just a must own they're, they're, they're a must for early 90s there's no getting around it it's like you know talking about early 90s and not talking about Nirvana you gotta talk about Pantera period they are that important they change the game and plus I'm from DFW uh, Vinnie Paul Dimebag the Abbott Brothers they're from DFW they're, they're our hometown heroes God rest their souls and I have every reason in the world to put them at number one. They should be number one. But I can't do it. And I'm about to, <laughs> I can't do it. And I'll share with you in a moment why. Number one, for no logical reason whatsoever, this is a, a heart pick, White Zombie, L6 or Sisto, Devil Music, Volume 1, had one big radio hit in Thunder Kiss 65, one minor hit in Black Sunshine. So why is it number one? How, how does that beat Pantera? How does it beat, you know, Tool or Rage Against the Machine or Nine Inch Nails? How does it beat them on this list? 
it, it, it like I said, it's it's a heart pick. All right, this is the band. This is the album. Thunder Kiss is the song that got me into heavy metal. I was a late bloomer, ninth grade. I had heard Metallica. I, I wasn't really get, feeling them. I wasn't really getting into it. I, I had heard Guns N' Roses, and I was like, yeah. I heard Man in a Box by Al, Alice in Chains, and I couldn't couldn't get into it. And I had a friend of mine, Eric. He's introducing me to all this stuff. And thank you, Eric. Ninth grade, I had I had moved, lived in the trailer park <laughs> with my friends, one of them being Eric. I had we moved up to up the highway a little bit, about ten miles. He came and spent the night with me one night in ninth grade, or one weekend in ninth grade, and brought over a cassette. All right, and this is what people used to do back in the day, in case you're young and you're watching this for whatever reason. It'd basically be bootleg copies of music, you know, and that's how you would find new bands a lot of times. And this guy had had this cassette, only had two songs. One side had Tool Sober. The other other side had White Zombies, Thunder Kiss 65. So we, heard, we listened to Sober, and I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And I wasn't sure about it. But I was gravitating towards it. He flipped it over, put in Thunder Kiss 65. My mind was blown. I fell in love. For the first time, I got heavy metal. For the first time, I was like, holy... You know, like the, like the light bulb went off. Like, oh my God, this is for me. This is my music. Here we are. Even today, you know, whatever, 20-something years later, I can still... Turn on that album, and it is just fire from beginning to end. I love this album. It's my favorite album. It's, White Zombie's not my favorite band by any stretch. I've since then I, I, I've taken in so many different kinds of bands and, and genres of metal, and and love so many things. And there's so many so many bands that you know I do love more than White Zombie, but this album is just insane. I, I, it'll always be number one in my heart. I don't care above everything. It is my absolute favorite album. I'll put it above Master of Puppets. I'll put it above anything Pantera ever did. Sepultura. <clears throat> Megadeth. I don't care. This is my favorite album of all time. And I know tons of people will disagree with that. You got every right to. But for me, in my opinion, my heart, my video, it's number one. So anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.